In today's video, I'm gonna be doing a walkthrough of SAT practice test three's writing section. I've scored perfectly on back-to-back -back SAT writing sections. And as I go through this practice test, I'm gonna show you the most efficient way to answer each and every question. And I'll also give you some tips, tricks, and grammar rules that you need to know for the SAT writing section. So with all that being said, make sure to like and subscribe and let's go ahead and get started. Questions one through 11 are based on the following passage. Shed some light on the workplace. Studies have shown that employees are happier, healthier, and more productive when they work in an environment all right, what I'm seeing here is I'm looking for a parallelism. Okay, so I have happier, healthier, that's all perfect. I can get rid of B because it has healthy there. I wanna have happier, maintain that parallel structure with the verbs. And then I have and more productive, which is fine. Obviously we can't say productive ER with I-E-R as our ending there. So saying and more productive there works perfectly. So our answer there will be no change. Looking at C and D, I'll explain why those are wrong as well. We don't need to repeat they. We know that we already said employees right here. Okay, so we don't have to repeat they. And then saying being, we already said that they are. Okay, so you don't have to say being there. Okay, moving on, we have uh, what more productive when they work in an environment in which temperatures are carefully controlled. We're asked for which choice most appropriate uh, introduction to the passage. So we have to read on to get you know more context before we answer that. New buildings may be designed with these studies in mind, but many older buildings were not, resulting in spaces that often depend primarily on artificial lighting. So it looks like I'll be talking about lighting. While employees may balk at the expense of reconfiguring such buildings to increase the amount of natural light, the investment has been, has been shown to be well worth it in the long run for both employees and employers. Ultimate here, it's looking like I'll talk about lighting, but I'll come back to two after I get some more context, but it's probably gonna be something dealing with light. For one thing, lack of exposure to natural light has a significant impact on employees' health. A study conducted in 2013 by Northwestern University in Chicago showed that inadequate natural light could result in eye strain, headaches, and fatigue, as well as interference with the body's circadian rhythms. At this point, the writer is considering adding the following sentence, workers in offices with windows sleep an average of 46 minutes more per night than workers in offices without windows. Okay, and then I've got circadian rhythms here. All right, one thing I'm immediately noting is I just talked about circadian rhythms. I'm talking about it again. Don't really want to interrupt that. So we have circadian rhythms, which are controlled by the body's biological clocks. Okay, keep in mind that the bodies do have possession over the, bio over the biological clocks. Okay, so in this case, also, it's not going to be, you know, bodies, right? It's which are controlled by the bodies as in B-O-D-Y apostrophe S there. Okay, so our answer there should have that. So we can get rid of B. We can also get rid of answer choice A, okay, because it's got the wrong um, form of bodies, right? We obviously know that bodies do possess the biological clocks, but the clocks don't own anything, obviously, so we can get rid of answer choice D. Our answer there would be C for number four, okay? And then influenced by influenced body temperature, hormone release, cycles of sleep and wakefulness, and other bodily functions. Okay, now we can go back and answer three. So ultimately, we see that our sentence that's before where we're considering adding this, right, which I'll highlight in green, and our sentence after, okay, which I'll just highlight in green as well here, Okay, both of those are ultimately talking about circadian rhythm. So we don't want to interrupt that by just adding in this fact about pretty much this, you know, fairly random fact, even though it's slightly related to what we're talking about. It's too random and it's interrupting our discussion of circadian rhythms there. So we shouldn't make the addition Y. Uh, option C, no, because it interrupts the discussion of circadian rhythms. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, moving on. We got number, let's see here. Number five is next. So we can go down. Disruptions of circadian rhythms have been linked to sleep disorders, diabetes, depression, and bipolar disorder. Like any other health problems, these ailments can increase employee absenteeism, which in turn is costly for employers. Okay, what's our subject? So we gotta determine our number of our subject and match that to our verb. Subject is employee absenteeism, that's singular. Okay, so we need a singular verb then. If we look at our options, we can get rid of B because that's plural. Uh, we can get rid of D as well, that's also plural. So then we're between is and is being. Here we don't have to say is being, right? We would just say is obviously. Okay, we would just say, which uh, in turn is costly for employers, right? Can increase employee as absenteeism, which in turn is costly for employers. No need for being there. Okay, so our answer there for five would be A. Employees who feel less than 100% are sleep deprived are also less prone to work at their maximal productivity. One company in California gained a huge boost in its employees' morale. Uh, and then we have when it moved from an artificially lit distribution to one with natural, we're asked which, so which choice best supports the statement made in the previous sentence. We know in our previous sentence, we talked about um, workers who are, uh, feeling less than 100% and sleep deprived will not achieve their maximal productivity. So we want to talk about productivity, not morale, so we can get rid of A. We have B saw a 5% increase in productivity. Yes, that is supporting what we just said. It saved a great deal in operational costs. No, we want to talk about productivity. Invested large amounts of time and capital. Once again, we want to focus in on productivity there. Our answer would be B for number six. Okay, moving on. We've got number seven. In context, which choice best combines underlying sentences? All right, so keep in mind, since this is the first sentence of our new paragraph, we also want to you know try to transition, if we can, from that previous paragraph. So we're going to start with our shortest answer choices first, as we do when we're combining sentences. So if we're looking at our options here, it looks like our shortest one will be C. So we'll go one, two, three, four. So starting with one, typically constituting 25 to 50 percent of a building's energy use. So right off the bat, not a great transition from the previous paragraph. Uh, then we have artificial light sources, lower worker productivity, and are costly. It doesn't make sense to go 
um, artificial light sources, lower work, worker productivity, and then say they're costly, it would make sense to say they're costly before we say worker productivity here because ultimately we just came off this introductory phrase of typically constituting 25 to 50% of a building's energy use. So C doesn't progress in a logical order within that sentence. We can get rid of C. Uh, let me go ahead and switch to my pen. Okay, so we can get rid of C. And then if we look at number two here, artificial lights which lower worker productivity and are costly. Okay, that's getting pretty wordy there. Also, it's indicating that it's non-essential, right? And then we have typically constitute anywhere from 25 to 50% of a building's energy use. That's illustrating why it's costly. So we wouldn't want to have costly contained in this non-essential phrase or clause here of which lower worker productivity and are costly. Okay, in that sense, it really isn't non-essential. It would have to be, you know, essential. So we can get rid of D. And then if we look at option B, the cost of artificial light sources aside from working productivity typically constitute anywhere from 25 to 50% of a building's energy use. We really don't want to interrupt our discussion of, you know, the cost being due to energy use. Okay, ideally we would just put worker productivity up front, you know, to start the sentence since we talked about it in the previous paragraph. So if we look at option, uh, option A, we'll see if it does that. Aside from lowering worker productivity, good, so that's a good transition. And then we have artificial light sources, okay, so that's correctly what we're modifying there. Or I'm sorry, we're not modifying anything there, we're just providing um, our transition of aside from lowering worker productivity. Oh, no, I'm sorry, it is a modifier, yep. Okay, so we are modifying artificial light sources there, that works. Aside from lowering worker productivity, artificial light sources are also costly, typically constituting anywhere from 25 to 50% of a building's energy use. Yeah, that's perfect, okay? It's efficient in word choice, you know, it's grammatically correct. That's gonna be perfect. We'll get C. Once again, we don't wanna split up this discussion of the cost of artificial light sources from constituting 25 to 50% of a building's energy use. Also saying aside from lowering worker productivity, we want that to start, so we transition from our previous paragraph. Moving on. When a plant in Seattle, Washington was redesigned for more natural light, the company was able to enjoy annual electricity reductions of $500,000 each year. We don't have to say each year because we said annual, which indicates it's each year. So we're just going to delete that. Okay. So our answer there for number eight would be D. Okay. Let's just quick go back up and let's answer number two a minute. Okay. So we ultimately want to talk about natural light here. So we can get rid of A that talks about temperatures, B that affords an adequate amounts of natural light. Natural light. That looks correct. If you look at C, that's thoroughly sealed to prevent energy loss. No. D in which they feel comfortable asking for special accommodations. No, we want to focus on natural light. Answer there would be B. All right, going to number nine now. Okay, it looks like we've got among the possibilities to reconfigure a building's lighting is the installation of full pane windows to allow the greatest degree of sunlight to reach office interiors. We'll have a transition here. Businesses can install light tubes, which is obviously going to be different from full pane windows. And then we have these are that have to be which are to refer back to these light tubes. Okay, so it'd have to be which are there. We're not going to say they, that'd be a comma splice. Those be a comma splice. These would also be a comma splice. Okay, so we can go ahead and get rid of all those. We just want to use which are, use a relative pronoun to refer back to light tubes there. Uh, going over here, so we're going to have pipes placed in workplace roofs to capture and funnel sunlight down into a building's interior as far as our transition between the sentences there. Uh, we're just talking about another option, you know, other than the full paint window. So we wouldn't say nevertheless or thus. There we would want to talk about, you know, another option or in other words, alternatively. So alternative to the full paint windows, you can use light tubes. That'd be perfect. Not finally because we're not, you know, going through a series of things. And then we have glass walls and dividers can also be used to replace sod walls as a means of. Okay, that's just an idiom question, knowing which preposition has to go there. We would say as a means of distributing natural light more freely. We wouldn't say as a means through distributing natural light, as a means of distributing natural light. So our answer there would be B for number 11. <clears throat> Transforming the American West through food and hospitality. Just as travelers taking road trips today may need to take a break for food for, at a rest stop along the highway, settlers transversing the American West by train in the mid-1800s often found themselves in need of refreshment. Now, notice how I didn't have to pause there. Themselves makes perfect sense. It's referring to the subject settlers. Settlers is plural. We need to have that plural, uh, plural pronoun here of themselves. We wouldn't say their selves, okay? We would say themselves. All right, now we've got, however, food available on rail lines was generally of terrible quality. We're asked which choice provides the most logical introduction to the sentence here. In this case, we need to read on then. So we got to introduce Fred Harvey somehow, and then we have a non-essential phrase or clause in an English-born entrepreneur, because we could take that out and this would still make sense. I'm assuming with 14, we are going to be connecting uh, these sentences. And I see that we are. Okay, so to connect them, we have uh, Fred Harvey, an English-born entrepreneur, decided. Okay, we're going to have a comma after the entrepreneur. The reason I'm doing that is because then I make this non-essential, which it is. I'm offsetting it with commas. And then I also have then Fred Harvey decided to open his own restaurant. That makes sense. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do there. We see our answer choice then has to be answer choice D. Okay, that's how we connect those two ideas together. And then we're avoiding having to repeat he because we already know who it is. So that's why we wanna do that. Okay, moving on then. We have uh, question number 13, right? So providing the most logical introduction to the sentence, we know that the sentence is ultimately talking about Fred Harvey opening his own restaurant, serving rail customers. So we wanna focus in on that. 
Now we also have to introduce Fred Harvey here. So we have the option of he had lived in New York and New Orleans. That's really irrelevant to him making um, these restaurants. Working for railroad companies also irrelevant to him making these restaurants. To capitalize on the demand for good food, yes, that's what's telling us about him making these restaurants and why he's doing it. Okay, He decided to open his own restaurant because he wanted to capitalize on that demand for great foods. Right? It's there will be C. We don't want to just delete the underlying portion because that underlying portion tells us why he's doing this. All right, now we got beginning in the 1870s, opened dozens of restaurants and rail stations and dining cars. These Harvey houses, which constituted the first restaurant chain in the United States, and this will have to be were unique. How do I know it has to be were unique? Well, because we are referring to the Harvey houses, which is plural, okay? So we have to have the plural were. We can't have was, was would be singular. Now, keep in mind, I know that I'm referring to those Harvey houses in part because this is non-essential, right? If we were to take all of that out, all of this underlying portion, Okay, from that comma after houses to the comma after the United States, sense would still make sense. We have these Harvey houses were unique. Now, the other thing that we got to recognize here then is we can go ahead and get rid of A and C because they have was, but then we have to have that correct pronoun. Well, we know that the pronoun has to be plural, therefore we know it has to be there. Okay, so it can't be it's our answer there for 15 has to be B. Moving on, we have the menu was modeled after those of fine restaurants, so the food was leagues beyond the, and it looks like we're going to have a choice of tone here. We have to maintain the tone established in the passage. Now, keep in mind that we are describing um, the food was leagues beyond the sinister fare. Keep in mind, fare is referring to the food here. Travelers were accustomed to receiving in transit. Now, we wouldn't describe food as sinister. We also wouldn't describe it as icky when we're trying to maintain the tone of the passage. Okay, obviously you could describe food as icky, but it doesn't fit the tone. Okay, that's the key part here. So we can get rid of that. And then it's between abysmal and surly. We wouldn't really use surly to describe food either, but we would describe poor food as abysmal. All right, that maintains our tone as well, so we can go ahead and keep on moving. His restaurants were immediately successful, but Harvey was not content to follow conventional business practices. We see in question 17, we have the writers considering deleting the previous sentence. Should the writer make this change? Well, in this case, we need to read on to decide if this properly you know, introduces our paragraphs. We have, although women did not traditionally work in restaurants in the 19th century, Harvey decided to try employing women as wait staff. Well, that's a non-conventional business practice. This is starting to support the idea that we should keep that change. We'll go ahead and keep reading, though. In 1883, he placed an advertisement seeking educated, well-mannered, articulate women, young women between the ages of 18 and 30. Okay, so I can, pretty, <clears throat> I can pretty much see at this point that we are having a, a solid introduction, so we should really keep this. So should the writer uh, delete this? The answer is no. Okay, the writer should not delete this because it's providing that logical introduction of the paragraph. It's not providing any sort of specific example in support of arguments made elsewhere, but we are properly introducing this paragraph. All right, question number 18 now. We have uh, response to the advertisement was overwhelming, even tremendous. Okay, those two mean the same thing, so I'm going to want to get rid of one of them. So I can get rid of A, I can get rid of... It uh, looks like a C, and I can get rid of a D as well because they're saying overwhelming and tremendous. They mean pretty much the same thing. It'd be redundant to say them both. I only want to say one, so my answer there will be B. All right, and then we have, and Harvey soon replaced the male servers at his restaurants with women. Those who were hired as Harvey girls joined an elite group of workers who were expected to complete a 30-day training program and follow a strict code of rules for conduct and curfews. In the workplace, the women donned identical black and white uniforms and carried out their duties with precision. Not only were such regulations meant to ensure efficiency of the business, um, but all but also helped to raise people's generally low opinion of the restaurant industry. Keep in mind, we need to have a subject right there. Okay, the reason we have to have a subject is we have a comma and then a fanboy, right? We have but. We have to have another independent clause. To have that, we need a subject there. We can't say but also helping, so we can go ahead and get rid of that, right? We can't say but also helped. We need to have a subject. A and B don't have subjects. Same thing with C. There's no subject there. And then D, we get that subject by providing in that pronoun they. Okay, so our answer has to be D. By putting in they, we now have that independent clause following that comma. All right. When, keep in mind that an important part of this is that there's a comma in one of the fanboys, which is what makes that grammatically correct. All right, now we can go ahead and keep moving. We've got question number 20. In return for the server's, server's work, the position paid quite well for the time, $17.50 a month plus tips, meals, room, board, laundry service, and travel expenses. Which choice most logically follows the previous sentence? Well, let's go ahead and, I mean, at this point, really our only option is to read through these, so we go ahead and do that. The, the growth of Harvey's business coincided with the expansion of the Santa Fe Railway, which served large sections of the American West. No, we want to focus in on the Harvey girls at this point. Um, B, Harvey would end up opening dozens of restaurants and dining cars, plus 15 hotels in his career. No, we want to focus in on the Harvey girls because that's the subject of the paragraph. These benefits enabled the Harvey girls to save money and build new and exciting lives for themselves in the so-called Wild West. Yes, okay, that's focusing in on the Harvey girls, sort of what this, uh, this compensation, these benefits meant to them, which we just discussed in that previous sentence. And then as choice D, the compensation was considered excellent at the time. We were already told that when it said that it was paid quite well for the time. So D would be redundant. All right, for as long as Harvey House has served rail travelers through the mid-20th through the mid -20th century, working there was a steady and lucrative position for women, living independently and demonstrating an intense work ethic. Okay, that right there is a introductory dependent clause or an introductory modifying, yeah, an introductory 
modifying phrase. I'm sorry, that's an introductory modifying phrase that is ultimately modifying the Harvey girls. Okay, and if you have an introductory modifying phrase, you offset it with a comma, not a semicolon. Okay, so we have to have that comma after ethic. We don't need and. Okay, we just want to have right after that comma the subject it's modifying, and in this case, that's the Harvey girl. So our answer there would be D for 21. Moving on to 22, the writer is considering revising the underlying portion to read West, inspiring books, documentaries, and even a musical. Let's go ahead and read through this. The Harvey girls became known as a transformative force in the American West. Well, we're saying it's a transformative force. Well, we want to illustrate then that they are a transformative force. How could we do that? Well, we could do that by showing that they inspired books, documentaries, and even a musical. So should we add this here? I'm going to go ahead and say yes, but before I go ahead and answer that for sure, I want to read just through the sentence after that to make sure that we're not repeating any information. So we have advancing the roles of women in the restaurant industry and the American workforce as a whole. The Harvey girls raise the standards for restaurants and blaze a trail in the fast-changing landscape of the Western territories. I see I wouldn't be repeating any information if I was to go ahead and add this. So should I add this? Yes. Why? Because it's providing examples of their influence or of that transformative force that was mentioned in that sentence. Okay, it's not about a transitional point in the paragraph. It's about showing their influence slash transformative force. Moving on to passage number three. How do you like those apples? Marketed as Smart Fresh, the chemical 1-MCP, 1-methylcyclopropene, has been used by fruit growers since 2002 in the United States and elsewhere to preserve the crispness and lengthen the storage life of apples and other fruit, which often must travel long distances before being eaten by consumers. Now we're asked for which choice most effectively combines underlying sentences. We can quick take a look at what those sentences are ultimately asking us to connect. So we have 1-MCP, Lengthen storage life by three to four times when applied to apples. This extended life allows producers to sell their apples in the off-season months after the apples have been harvested. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start with our shortest answer choices first. So we see that our order then will be something along these lines. One, two, three, and then four. All right, so ultimately what we're looking for here is things to be correct grammatically, follow a correct order, make sure that all the modifiers are correct, make sure that anything that's not essential is actually non-essential, things like that. So let's go ahead and read through it. So we have one MCP length and storage life when applied to apples by three to four times, allowing producers to sell their apples months after the apples have been harvested in the off season. The way that this is worded, it's indicating that the harvesting of the apples is actually occurring in the off season. Now that's actually not the case. They're harvesting them in season, but then they're not selling them till the off season. So C makes it sound um, incorrect, or C is incorrect because it ultimately is showing an incorrect relationship. Looking at number two now, months after apples have been harvested, producers are allowed to sell the apples. Well, that's kind of indicating that there's some sort of legal restriction, so that doesn't really make sense there. Okay, now if we go ahead and take a look at answer choice uh, A, which is number three here, we have one applied to apples, one MCP, length and storage life, by three or four times. Okay, that's following a correct order. So far, allowing producers to sell the apples in the off season, months after the apples have been harvested. We see that this not only is following a logical sequential order, okay, but it also has correct modifiers, right? One applied to apples, one MCP. Nothing is redundant, nothing's wordy, it's all concise, it's all efficient in word choice, right? Everything is good with A. So we can go ahead and pick A. If we go ahead and take a look at B, I'll show you what's wrong with that one as well here. We have producers are allowed to sell their apples months after they have been harvested, and then we have in the off season as non-essential. That's not actually non-essential here. That would have to be here. And then we have because one MCP, one applied to apples length and storage life by three or four times. And once again, you know, this is the incorrect order as well, because really what's at the, the end of this sentence you know, with one MCP being applied to apples and lengthening storage life, that comes before the producers then being able to sell in the off season. So B is incorrect order. It's also got, you know, things that are wrong with things being non-essential. So our answer there for 23 has to be A. Hopefully that was helpful in getting you to better understand, you know, why incorrect answer choices are incorrect there. All right, and at a cost of about one cent per pound of apples, one MCP is a highly cost-effective treatment. However, one MCP is not a panacea for fruit producers or sellers. There are problems and limitations associated with its use. So I'm assuming we're going to go ahead and get into those problems now. All right, we got a one here. I'm going to go ahead and find the sentence I got to place, and I'm going to place it while I read through. I see the sentence is coming all the way down here. We got sentence four. Where should we place sentence four? Let's go ahead and read it. We have but, that's indicating to me a contrast. Some fruits do not respond as well to one MCP as others. This is going to have to be due to maintain parallelism with the other do. So I can go ahead and answer 28 here as well. So I'll go ahead and pick B there. Hopefully you can see that, right? We have parallelism between the two do's. So this has to be due as well. Now, like I said, we have a contrast here in the beginning. Some fruits not responding well, so we want to sort of indicate that or put that um, in contrast to fruits that respond well, obviously coming before it. And then we have some responding adversely. I'd want examples of, you know, fruits responding adversely after the sentence then. So that's where I'm going to look to place it. So let's go ahead and go up to the beginning. We have one MCP works by limiting a fruit's production of ethylene, okay? And then we have this right here, what's underlined. We can go ahead and get rid of it. Here's why. What's coming after ethylene is just telling us what it is. And this is called an A-positive. 
And when we have an A positive, we don't need to have it is being or that is. We can just say A, right? We can just put in, you know, what it's describing. In this case, we are sort of defining ethylene here, a chemical that causes fruits to ripen and eventually rot. Like I said, it's an A positive. We can just delete the underlying portion there, get straight into it. All right, and then we have, well, one MCP keeps apples. And then we have the option of tight, firm, stiff, or tout. Keep in mind, we wouldn't describe an apple as tight. We wouldn't describe it as stiff. We wouldn't describe it as tout, but we would describe it as firm. So our answer there would be B. And crisp for months. It also limits. Okay, and then we have, I'm assuming a bunch of pronouns. We see that we have their versus its, right? Obviously dealing with homophones as well as, you know, whether our subject is plural or singular. Now, in this case, we're referring to apples. That's going to be plural. So our answer there has to be no change. Okay, it's going to be there. Keep in mind, it has to be the correct type of there, which is going to be T-H-E-I-R, which is indicating a plural and possessive. All right, so we have their scent production. Now, keep in mind, what did we just describe there? We described an adverse effect of one MCP. So what did I say has to come after sentence for? some sort of adverse effect. I can go ahead and highlight this so you see what I'm referring to, right? We see some responding adversely. What do we just describe? Well, we just described sense being limited. That's an adverse reaction. Therefore, we're gonna to wanna to end up placing sentence four after sentence one before sentence two, right? We see it also makes sense in the beginning of the sentence. I'll go ahead and highlight that as well in green so you can see this, right? In the beginning of sentence four, we have a contrast. Some fruits do not respond as well, right? Now, if we look at our sentence one, we have one MCP, works by limiting fruits production of ethanol, a chemical that causes fruits to ripen and eventually rot. And then after that, we would then place in sentence four, but some, some fruits don't respond as well to one MCP. So we indicate you know, a positive, contrasting that with the word but, now switching into that negative. So ultimately, we're going to want to place this sentence after sentence one. So we can go and put that down right there, after sentence one. All right, going back up here, we've got 24, 25, we're on 27 now. So we have um, this may not be much of a problem for certain kinds of apples that are not naturally very fragrant, such as Granny Smith, but for apples that are prized for their fruit fragrancy, such as Macintosh, it can be a problem with consumers, and this is going to have to be who will reject. How do I know that right away? Well, what I have here is I have a relative pronoun, right, which is going to have to be who, who, and then I have this relative clause, right, consumers who will reject apples lacking the expected aroma. Now, Keep in mind here, if you have a relative clause like this, you're going to want to look for that relative pronoun. In this case, obviously, it's going to be who because we're referring to those consumers. We want to, it wouldn't be which, right, which is another relative pronoun. But in this case, we're referring to people, right, the consumers. That's why it has to be who there. So make sure you do have the correct relative pronoun. If you want to see a list of those, you can look those up on Google. But common ones would include who, which. Um, but yeah, if you want to Google, those are really the two main ones that you need to know. But if you want to Google some other ones, you can. All right, moving on then. We've answered all the way up to 29. Okay, so we're on 29 here. Okay, some do not respond as well to one MCP treatment. Take Bartlett pears, for instance. Okay, that right there is an independent clause. I see that we're pretty much dealing with punctuation in this question. That's why I point this out. And then after that, we have, unless they are treated with exactly the right amount of one MCP at exactly the right time, they will remain hard and green until they rot. And consumers who experience this will be unlikely to purchase that again. Okay, we've got another independent clause in there, right? And they will remain hard and green until they rot. So we've got two independent clauses. How are we going to connect these? Well, what we need to recognize is that our second independent clause is illustrating the point in our first, Okay. We are taking Bartlett pears, for, for instance, in this case, right? And for instance, keep in mind that that's going to be part of this first independent clause that I want to keep here, okay? Obviously, for instance, isn't part of the independent clause itself, but I want to keep it on that side of whatever punctuation I use to separate these two independent clauses. Okay, after that, I'm illustrating why we're taking those Bartlett pears, for instance, right? I'm illustrating why they're a good example of a fruit that doesn't respond well to one MCP, okay? So if I go ahead and look at my answer choice, I can get rid of D. It's got four instances in this next part, okay? I want it in the first part. I can get rid of C because that'd be a comma splice. Looking at answer choice B, when our second independent clause illustrates the point in our first or you know, elaborates on our first, that's when we would want to use that, that colon there. Okay, So our answer there will be B. All right, moving on now. We got question 30. We answered that. We can go ahead and move on to 31. Okay, finally, researchers have found that one MCP actually increases susceptibility to some pathology in certain apple varieties. For example, Empire F. Uh, apples are prone to a tradition that causes the flesh of the apple to turn brown. Traditionally, apple producers have dealt with this by... Uh, leaving the apples in open air for three weeks before storing them in a controlled atmosphere with tightly regulated temperature, humidity, and carbon dioxide levels. As the graph shows, the flush of untreated empire apples that are first stored in the open air undergoes. And then I'm assuming we're going to have some graph. Yes, we're asked for an accurate interpretation of the data in the graph. Okay, key thing here. We want to know what we're looking for in our graph before we go there. We want to look for the flush of untreated empire apples that are first stored in open air and compare that to the flush of untreated empire apples that are immediately put into storage. Okay, and we want to have the correct comparison there. Okay, so we know we're looking at the untreated empire apples. So that's going to be that lighter gray. We see that when they're immediately placed in a controlled atmosphere, they got about 50% browning versus when they are put in open air for three weeks, we have significantly less. We have about 7% looks like. So about a 43% difference there. Let's go ahead and go back up. 
Maybe we've got the option of slightly more browning. No, we know this is a pretty significant change. We know it's not twice as either. Um, looking at instant choice A, 5%, we know that that's not the difference. It's going to be substantially less browning, right? And then, obviously, you see that, you know, the flush of untreated that are first stored in open air is substantially less as well, making sure that you have the correct relationship there. All right, moving on now we have, however, when empire ath like apples are treated with one MCP, and now we have which choice offers an accurate interpretation. So now we're looking at when they are treated. Okay, so that's going to be that darker gray. Well, what do we see? We see that there's not as much of a difference. We have about 45% in those that are placed in the controlled atmosphere, maybe about 52% in those that are put in the controlled atmosphere after three weeks in the air. So we want to show, you know, maybe that contrast of when they are treated, it's a significant um it's obviously significantly less differences between the graphs. Okay, so if we look at answer choice A, we have their flush turns brown when the apples are first stored in the open air, though not under other conditions. We see there's browning in both conditions. B, roughly half the flush turns brown regardless of whether the apples are first stored in the open air. We know that that's true because one was about 45%, one was about 52, which both of those are right about half, obviously. Um, so our answer there would be B. Just go ahead and show you why C and D are wrong real quick. We have answer choice C, their flush browns when they are put directly into a controlled atmosphere, but not when they're first stored in open air. We know that that's not true. It was about half for both. D, their flush turns brown when they are first stored in open air, though not as quickly. Uh, we don't know anything about time here. All we know is the percent flash changing. So our answer there would be B. All right, moving on, we have although researchers continue to search for the right combination of factors that will keep fruits fresh and attractive, now we're told the writer wants a conclusion that conveys how the shortcomings of 1MCP presented in the passage affect the actions of people in the fruit industry. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at our answer choice. We have option A, the problem may be that consumers are overly concerned with superficial qualities. No, we want to focus in on the producers, okay? Actions of people in the fruit industry, that would be the producers. A, focuses on consumers. B, many of the improvements to fruit quality they have discovered so far require trade-offs in other properties of the fruit. That's not focusing in on the actions of people in the fruit industry. That's just stating, making a statement there. C, for many fruit sellers, uh, for now, many fruit sellers must weigh the relative values of aroma, color, and freshness when deciding whether to use 1MCP. Yes, that's right on, okay? It's focusing on the actions, right? The choices that they have to make, choices being an action there, um, and directly related to them selling the fruit, really focusing on the main focus of our passage there with that conclusion as well. And it's choice D, it must be acknowledged that 1MCP, despite some inadequacies, has enabled the fruit industry. Once again, that's not really focusing in on producers. It's focusing in too much on the 1MCP itself. Um, there's really no, con no really... Uh, connection to the actions of the people in the fruit industry there. All right, moving on. Now we got more than one way to dress a cat from Michelangelo's David to Vincent Van Gogh's series of self-portraits to Grant Wood's iconic images of a farming couple in American Gothic. That's not an independent clause. Okay, that is not an independent clause. So we can't have a period there. We can get rid of B. We can get rid of A. We can get rid of the semicolon as well because it's not an independent clause. Okay, right there we just have, you know, we got this preposition at the beginning. We see that it's going to be a dependent clause, dependent clause at the beginning of a sentence. We can go and put a comma there. All right, so we got works by human artists have favored representations of members of their own species to those of other species. Indeed, when we think about animals depicted in well-known works of art, the images of dogs playing poker, okay, this end dash is indicating the I probably have a non-essential phrase or clause, popularized, by, popularized in a series of paintings by American artist C.M. Coolidge. I see I'm closing this non-essential phrase or clause there. Got to use that same end dash that was used to begin it, so my answer there will be B. Maybe the first and only one that comes to mind, yet some of the earliest known works of art, including paintings and drawings tens of thousands of years old, found in cave walls in Spain and France, Portray. How do I know it's got to be portray? Well, I got to match the number of my subject to the number of my verb. I see here between these commas is a non-essential phrase or clause. When I'm identifying my subject, I'm going to go ahead and look before that, and I have these works of art. Keep in mind, art is singular. Now, is our subject singular? No. Why? Because of art is a prepositional phrase. We ignore prepositional phrases when determining the number of our subject. The number of our subject is going to be works, which is plural. Okay, so we would say works portray animals. Okay, so our answer there would be A. I'm sorry, our answer there would be answer choice C. Okay, it's going to be portray. Keep in mind, we're also matching that present tense as well, right? So just for example, like where the present tense is, you know, we have some of the earliest known works of art, portray animals. We're not going to say portraying. Okay, that doesn't make sense. Same thing with has portrayed. If we're going to say it has portrayed, it would be in the past. We know that they portray animals. It's still occurring. It's present tense, okay? We don't have to do this uh, sort of past, present. Also, if we're going to use has, it would have to be singular. So that's telling us right there that that's wrong because we know our subject's plural. We know our answer there's got to be C. So another thing too, if you're ever stuck sort of trying to figure out tense, oftentimes you can get rid of some of your answer choices just by number. Like in this case, has is singular. Therefore, we know D is incorrect. Our answer's got to be portray. All right, moving on now we've got, nor has artistic homage to our fellow creatures entirely died out in the millennia since. 
We said that the writer wants to link the first paragraph to ideas that follow. We need to know the ideas that follow then. So let's go ahead and come back to that after we get some more context. I've got a one here. I'm going to find the sentence I got to place. That's five. Let's figure out what's got to come before and after it. Continuing the tradition, I got to have some discussion of a tradition before I place this sentence. We got Peter's daughters, Elisabetta, introduced the best and strongest cats and rushed to the Hermitage, potentially some discussion of the Hermitage after that. But really focusing in on, I have to have a tradition before I have sentence five. All right, the state. Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg, one of Russia's greatest art museums, has long had a productive partnership with a much-loved animal, the cat. For centuries, the cat have guarded this famous museum, ridding it of mice, rats, and other rodents that could damage the art, not to mention scare off visitors. How do I know it's got to be scare? i got to maintain parallelism with damage here. Okay, so maintaining parallelism with damage tells me I have to have my answer there of scare. Also, you can go ahead and make sure that it matches in number. In this case, the subject is going to be, I believe, the rodents, right? Yep. The subject there would be the rodents, the rodents is plural, okay, so we got to have that plural verb as well, and scare at the same time, also we're maintaining that parallelism, so right on for 38. All right, moving on to number uh, 39, let's keep reading. We have Peter the Great introduced the first cat to the Hermitage in the early 18th century. We have later Catherine the Great declared the cats to be official guardians uh, of, the gal of the galleries. Now keep in mind that we start this tradition in sentence three, okay, we see a continuation of the tradition in sentence five, and then we see really almost... Not a, not a conclude not a conclusion you know of the of the tradition, but what's clearly later on right because really the tradition has to go on for a while before these cats are declared official guardians. That's why we have to have um, sentence five come between three and four there. So it's going to be after sentence three there. All right, now we have today the museum holds a yearly festival honoring these faithful workers. Moving on down, we got these cats are so cherished. Oh, hang on, we got to go back up and we got to answer. Number 37, right? So which choice is best accomplishing this goal? We see that we're focusing on cats within this museum. So that's what we want to focus on. So let's go ahead and take a look at A, we have no change. That's not touching on the museum or the cats. B, special attention being paid to the animals such as cats. We want to introduce this museum. C, even though most paintings in museums are of people, not animals, that's not the focus. We're focusing in on this specific museum in Russia. So our answer there would be answer choice D, as the example of one museum in Russia shows. All right, moving on, we got these cats are so cherished by the museum that officials recently decreed, well, this isn't, you know, the night, this isn't the 1600s anymore, right? This is now, okay? Museum officials, you know, pretty much currently, right? Or at least in more recent times have decreed, no, they didn't force anyone to make it. They're not licensing this out. They're commissioning original paintings, which just means that they're basically paying an artist to make them, okay? To be in, made of six of them and each, a cat is depicted upright in a human-like pose and clothed in imperial-like and Russian attire. The person chosen for this task, okay? That right there is an introductory modifying phrase. So we're gonna have a comment after that. And then we have digital artist Eldar Zakharov. Keep in mind, we need to come after Eldar Zakharov because what I'm going to highlight here is all a non-essential phrase or clause. Now, keep in mind, we also don't need to have a comma after digital artist. Okay, digital artist is just describing Eldar Zakharov. No need for a comma there. So we can get rid of B, we can get rid of A. And then obviously the answer that's going to match ours here is going to be answer choice D. Keep in mind, we get rid of, we can go ahead and offset the non-essential phrase or clause, like I said, with those commas. No need for a comma um, by that digital artist there. And then that'll be our answer right there. All right, so then moving on, number 42, we got painted the cats in the style traditionally used by portrait artists in so doing, which choice most effectively sets up examples that follow. We have to have those examples then. One portrait, the Hermitage Court Chamber Herald Cat includes a, or an, aristocratic tilt of feline ears as well as a stately sweep of tail emerging from the stiff scarlet and the gold of royal court dress. The wise, thoughtful green eyes of the subject of the Hermitage Court Outrunner Cat mimic those of a trusted royal advisor. Some may find it peculiar, or at this, yeah, okay, so as we can see there, we're talking about a description of these cats. They're painted, you know, sort of as royalty, so that's what we want to focus in on with 42. So we can go ahead and answer this. He painted the cats in the style traditionally used by portrait artists, and so doing, we have presenting the cats as noble individuals worthy of respect. Yes, I'll go ahead and show you why B through D are wrong as well. Managing to capture each uh, unique characteristic of each cat. No, he's not doing that. He's painting them pretty much all as nobility, royalty. C, commenting on the absurdity of dressing cats in royal robes. No one's dressing cats in royal robes in real life, so that's why C is wrong, indicating the cats were very talented mouse catchers. It has nothing to do with that. All right, moving on, we've got 43. So the writer's considering adding in this following sentence right here, right? The museum occupies six historical buildings, including the Winter Palace, a former residence of Russian Empire. Should we make this addition here? We know that we don't want to because it's really kind of irrelevant to this paragraph, irrelevant to the discussion as a whole. So answer there would be no. And then as far as our answer choice, yeah, because it fails to indicate why the Winter Palace became an art museum, no, because it's providing background information that's not relevant to this paragraph, okay? All right, moving on. We have some may find it peculiar uh, to observe cats portrayed in formal court poses, but these felines, and then we have you know some phrase there, are benefactors of the museum as important as any human. 
What we want to focus on here is obviously this is our concluding sentence. We want to make sure that we hammer the main point of the passage home, right? So we have mastering the art of killing mice and rats. That's true for all cats. We want to focus in on specifically what they're contributing to the museum because that's really the focus of this passage. Option B, acting as a lead predator in the museum's ecosystem. That's really not the point of this, right? Obviously, yes, they're acting as that, you know, predator in the ecosystem, but this is focusing too much on sort of that science aspect or this food chain aspect. What we really want to focus on is the benefit they're providing the museum, right? How they're benefiting the museum. Okay, so we have option C, hunting down and killing mice, rats one by one. All cats can do that. And then D, which will be our correct answer, protecting the museum's priceless artworks from destructive rodents, right? That's the, contrib that's the contribution they're making to this museum. Right, so that's gonna be our answer there for number 44. Hopefully this video is helpful. If it was, make sure to like and subscribe. In addition to that, if you're looking to donate or if you're looking for my website where I offer private SAT prep, college essay brainstorming, and college essay editing, then be sure to check out the links in the description.